Good morning. Welcome to worship on this rather soggy Sunday. Welcome to those here in person and the visitors we have with us. Welcome to those of you joining us online. A few announcements this morning. First, in two weeks, we have our annual meeting. So if you are a voting member of this congregation, plan on that. January 20th at 1130 here in person. We received the sad news of Lon Samuel's death this week and planning a funeral service Saturday, January 28th at 11 o'clock here. You are invited to be here for that. I'm going to encourage you to read through the rest of your announcements in your bulletin, things like changes to our subscription to the Living Lutheran magazine, if you like that and want to continue receiving it please talk to Barbara in the office. Um, the women's retreat, small groups, and other things for you to look through in your bulletin. Are there any other announcements do you like lifted up this morning? If not, we'll continue with our call to worship. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and just and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy, I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Um, be to God. We continue with our gathering hymn 715 in your hymnal.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray. Let us pray together a prayer of the day. Holy God, our strength and our redeemer, by your spirit, hold us forever, so that through your grace, we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you and joyfully find you. Through Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. The first lesson is, is, comes from the book of Isaiah, the 49th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, God named me. 
The Lord made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of God's hand, I was hid. The Lord made me a polished arrow. In God's quiver, I was hid away. And the Lord said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be a servant, to bring Jacob back to God, and that Israel might be gathered to the Lord, for I am honored in the sight of the Lord. My God has become my strength. For the Lord says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, the Holy One of Israel, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Monarchs shall see and stand up, chieftains, and they shall prostrate themselves, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. I waited patiently upon the Lord. <clears throat> Out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a high cliff, making my footing sure. The Lord put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to the Lord. And they shall see and stand in awe, and put their trust in the Lord. Happier they who trust in the Lord. The second reading is taken from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ both the Lord, their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in Christ, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. God will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you are called into partnership with the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, the one on whom you see the spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and testified that this is the chosen one of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? Jesus said to them, come and see. They came and saw where Jesus was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Andrew first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. Andrew brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter, the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. And if there are any young people who would like to come forward for a children's sermon, now is the time to do so. Wonderful. And actually, if there's just a couple of you, we might just circle up here, if that's okay. Awesome. So I need your help brainstorming something. Are you feeling up to that? I'm trying to think of things that are sticky, like, like bubble gum, bubble gum, something that's sticky. What, tape? Syrup, maple syrup, definitely, definitely sticky. Anything else? Sap, tree sap, ooh, if you ever got pine sap on your hands, really hard to get off, for sure. Glue, glitter seems to just stick magically. Definitely. What about, what about this? What is this? Stickers or a name tag, maybe? Name tags stick to us, right? They, we write our names on them and they tell people who we are. Sticky notes. Yes, all these things are super sticky and I'm sure that we could list as many as we had minutes. So name tags, they tell us, tell other people who we are, right? 
and you know they they'll stay on for a little bit but eventually we change our clothes or you know they get less sticky and they fall off right well i have some name tags here for you all what does what does that say on there beloved child of god what do you all think about that that's a name for us, right? And we put that, that name tag on ourselves, which you're welcome to do so right now if you would like. That tells, reminds us when we look in the mirror and reminds other people when they see us that we too are beloved children of God. And yes, that name tag is probably going to fall off later because name tags are imperfect and not always sticky in the same way that duct tape is or something like that but with these name tags your belovedness as children of god goes deeper than that right even if the name tags comes off that doesn't change that you're children of god right and so today as you wear those name tags if you look at them in the mirror or see them on the back of your name you're already the name tags that you're already here wearing um, I invite you to remember your belovedness and when you look at other people today, remember that they, even if they're not actually wearing one of those name tags, that they too are beloved children of God and that we're called to show them kindness and love in the same way that they are called to do the same to you all. Shall we pray? Dear God, we give you thanks for the way that you name us your beloved children. Please help us to see the belovedness in each other and in ourselves as we go through our day to day and into our life beyond this space. In your name we pray. Amen. And before you all leave, I need your help with one last thing this morning. Are you willing to help me with that? Because I have a couple more name tags here that, uh, and there's some people out here who I think also could maybe use one of these name tags. When you head back to your seats, would you be willing to pass some of these out so people can also be reminded of their belovedness too? Okay, thanks friends. Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We hear John the Baptist witnessed who Jesus is multiple times in today's gospel reading. This repetition calls us to pay attention. To hear it once just isn't enough. Look, here is the Lamb of God. Beyond John is simply pointing Jesus out to his disciples, he is already proclaiming the future of Jesus's life, one that will lead to the cross and the tomb. And John's witness to the truth of who Jesus is will also get John himself killed. And yet, despite the uncertainty they enter into, Two of John's disciples hear this and follow Jesus. Andrew fetches his brother Simon, soon to be Simon Peter, and announces that the anointed one, the Messiah, has been found. Last week, we heard Pastor Lissa talk about our identity as God's beloved children given to us in baptism. This is a transformation and a beginning, as we die to sin and are raised to new life in Christ, sent forth into the world to proclaim the presence and love of the Lamb of God to all people. Tomorrow is Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. He is one of God's beloved children who was killed for proclaiming God's justice and love in the face of racial inequity. 
His faith was the foundation on which his advocacy and resistance was grounded. Despite harassment by the FBI, numerous assaults and imprisonments, and attacks on his own family. Secure in his identity as God's child and named beloved by the God of the universe, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was equipped by the Holy Spirit for radical honesty and action in the face of hatred, violence, and white apathy. Dr. King, as well as thousands of other people who did not get a national holiday named for them, witnessed in body and blood to the inherent belovedness of people and communities of color and their deserving of equal justice and treatment. I reread the letter named The Call to Unity from eight white local clergymen and bishops in 1963 in Birmingham, Alabama, which was written to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I reread that in preparation for this sermon, as well as Dr. King's response, known as the letter from Birmingham jail. And I commend both of you to read them this week. A quick Google search, we'll get those for you. What I was struck by in the letter titled, A Call to Unity, was the deliberate call by leaders in the Christian and Jewish faiths for peace and order at the expense of those waiting for justice. They decried the violence, but stated that the peaceful protesters brought it upon themselves. The message was clear. Stop marching for justice. Go back to being quiet and patient, or at least quiet and patient outside of closed doors, so that we white people are not uncomfortable. Unfortunately, we could see a similar letter being signed by clergy today, even 60 years later. In his response in the letter from Birmingham jail, Dr. King talks about the danger of choosing order over justice about the myth of time passively curing all social ills, of the difference between false peace, which is only the absence of tension, and true peace, which is the presence of justice. Silence in the face of injustice only perpetuates the injustice. What does it look like to follow Jesus today for you? For Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., it meant standing up to injustice on a national and global scale. In today's gospel passage, for the disciples Andrew and Simon Peter, following Jesus meant stepping out beyond their comfort zone and responding to Jesus' invitation to come and see. For Simon Peter, it meant receiving a new name, symbolizing the beginning and the transformation ahead. They didn't have an answer to Jesus's question, what are you looking for? But they trusted that Jesus would show them the way. They wit heard the witness of John the Baptist proclaiming the spirit of God dwelling in Jesus and acted through trust and faith. They followed Jesus despite the uncertainty, discomfort, and difficulty of the path that lay before them. Jesus, the Lamb of God, invites us to come and see and follow him, regardless if we know what we are looking for or not. Grounded in the identity given to us by Christ as God's beloved children, visible name tag or no, it is there on your hearts. The Holy Spirit strengthens and equips us for the work of justice and peace in the world in God's name. So, beloveds, how does our own fear of discomfort keep us from following Christ's invitation to come and see where God is at work in the world? How does our too often frequent silence as people of faith speak volumes in protecting the status quo 
and keeping people under the thumb of oppression. Equipped and strengthened by the Holy Spirit, you have everything you need to follow Christ to the foot of the cross, even and especially when it is hard and painful to do so. But I promise that you are not there alone. Your community and Christ meets you there. You are named beloved by the God of the universe. You are set free from the power of sin and death and sent into the world to proclaim the radical justice and liberation that Christ brings. You have been transformed and given new life in the waters of baptism. Each day is an invitation to come and see, both a beginning and a transformation through God's grace. Go and proclaim the liberating good news of the Lamb of God. Amen. Our hymn of the day is hymn number 314. I invite you to stand and body your spirit as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Put a new song in the mouth of your church, O oh God. Inspire all to tell of your faithfulness, sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the earth. Bless the witness of all who follow the push of the Holy Spirit to proclaim your love in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. The waters of baptism call us into life in the spirit. Preserve the world's waters, O oh God. Protect them from pollution. Support plants and animals who depend on them. Bring rain in places of drought and guide excess water to safe places of runoff. Guide us in protecting local waterways and in responding to devastating floods and mudslides. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. 
Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Show your mercy to all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. Fill governing bodies with righteousness. Equip judges and judicial officials with discernment and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. You incline your ear to all who cry to you. Draw near to individuals and communities suffering violence, injustice, illness, and poverty. Hide them in the shadow of your hand and make us signs of your faithfulness to all in need. We pray especially for Barb, Heidi, Jeff, Leslin, Judy, Dick, Julie, Tony, the family of Lon Samuels, and all those we hold dear. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. You are glorified in the servants you have called. With Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., give us bold trust in you. Even when it makes us uncomfortable or afraid, give us courage to receive your call to repentance and racial justice. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. In every time and place you have sanctified your people, we praise you for the testimony of those who have died in the faith and witness to your love, including Lon Samuels. Strengthen us as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting in your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share signs of peace with one another.
Let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see. You may be seated this morning. Those of you here in person can come forward. We'll start with the piano side. Follow the guide of our ushers. You'll receive your bread, which is gluten-free and vegan, and your wine or grape juice. The wine is red, the grape juice is white, and there are cups on, there are baskets on either side for your cups when you are finished. Those of you wishing to remain in your seats and you picked up a cup on your way in, and those of you joining us online, you're welcome to use whatever wine, bread, wine and grape juice, bread you have on hand. At this time, I invite those of you remaining in your seats and online to open your bread, this is the body of Christ given for you. Near wine or grape juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And we continue with the Lamb of God. Thank mm -hmm.
This is the body of Christ given to you. This is the body of Christ given to you. This is the body of Christ given to you. This is the body of Christ given to you. This is the body of Christ given to you. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God who surrounds us, the God who walks with us, the God who blows through us and unites us, go out with us, giving us light and life, courage and peace. Amen. Our sending hymn is hymn number 696. <laughs>
Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord.